if I can, if I can share right now. There you go. We're there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, anyway, yeah. If you need anything, I'm here. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Well, everybody, I want to apologize for that technical issue. Um, my computer was ready to go. I was practicing last night. Everything was good to go. And I go in this morning and we have issues. That's how we know we're teachers, right? Because there's always something that shows up at the last minute. Okay. So let me start again. Um, I was able to talk a lot by myself on the previous session. So now I'm going to, I'm going to start again. Right? So I'm going to go a little bit fast because now I lost 15 minutes due to that technical issue. I was practicing last night and I was running out of time. So now I'm going to have to cut off a few parts and then I'm going to have to go a little bit fast. Right? So let me just show you what I'm going to be presenting. What I'm going to be presenting is this program. Uh, well, it's actually a, a website called teachermade.com. Teachermate.com, it's it's an app that I've been using for two and a half years. And basically, a few years ago, all of us used to do paper assignments, right? Well, since technology is getting better, now, because of Teachermate, all my paper assignments have gone digital. And what that allows me to do is auto grading. Auto grading is a big thing, right? Because it saves me a lot of time, especially when I'm a start tested subject. Right. And I have usually I have about 105 students and then I give my students like like six, seven assignments a week. So to grade them all, it, it, it's kind of hard. Right. So this program allows me to do that. Right. And let me just introduce myself because I did introduce myself in the previous one. But let me start again. So uh, my name is Mr. Salome Benitez. I see some familiar faces. Uh, and those of you that don't know me, this is my for, I'm starting my fourth year at PSJA, uh, going into my 10th year overall. I work at Jaime Escalante Middle School and I teach eighth grade science. And as many of you know, eighth grade science is start tested. So this program allows me to get my students ready for the new start test items since the beginning. So I train my students to, to be able to recognize those star items. And, and get them proficient in that, right? And you might be asking, but we already have that with Nearpod. We already have that with X. We already have this with this and that, right? Well, that, that's fine, right? But this program is exclusive to my classroom and 99% of all my assignments are done here in TeacherMate, right? Uh, quizzes, you know, worksheets, reviews, everything is done on TeacherMate. The only thing I don't use is just exams because my curriculum uh, basically provides those for me, right? So what is TeacherMate? TeacherMate is basically uh, like an app that is designed to empower us educators with tools to create, uh, distribute, and access digital assignments. Uh, be, if, ever since I started with this program, I only print about 200 pages a semester, right? Everything else is digital. Right. So when I print those pages because I teach science is basically just the periodic table. That's basically what I print because I have my kids color and stuff like that. But everything else is done on teacher made. And, and well, if time allows, we're going to do an assignment and then I'm going to show you the auto grading and how it how easy it is basically to pick up grades from students. Right. So there are three points I wanted to talk about today, but because of the whole technical technical issue, I may just have time for the first two, which is customized digital worksheets, right? And automated grading. The differential instruction, I probably won't get to that, but it, hey, uh, because of this issue, I will be uh, available. If you guys have questions afterwards, uh, we can meet in teams. I can show you how to use it, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a very good program. At first, it's going to seem very intimidating because there's so much to it but we can adapt and we can make it work out, right? So now, TeacherMate is not free. There is a free version, but it's super, super limited. Uh, they have gone up in price, and these are the current prices that they have, right? So if you wanna pay monthly, it is $10 a month. If you wanna buy the whole year, it's $79. And this is new. Uh, I'm not gonna go into this because I think it's better if you just buy if you decide to go into this route, you can just basically get the annual. It's $80 a year, and the amount of time that this program saves me, you know, I could pay $200 for this. And, you know, us teachers, we drink a lot of coffee. Some of us spend $80 a month 
on Starbucks or Dutch Bros or whatever, right? So I think $80 a year for this particular program, it, it's, it's pretty good, right? So now, <clears throat> I'm not going to read this uh, because it, it's a lot, but I'm just going to uh, paraphrase it. So you can create digital worksheets tailored to the curriculum, right? Uh, whenever you do this, it allows you to create, you know, auto grading for you, right? Now, my daughter, she's in seventh grade. Last year, she was asking me for help on a review, right? They were having an end of year uh, assessment and she was doing a review. This review was 35 slides, right? 35 slides on Google Slides. And we know that Google Slides doesn't have automatic grading. It doesn't have automatic grading. So imagine a teacher, 35 slides times 80 students. That's gonna be a lot of time you know, spending grading. What you can do with this program is basically you can set up those Google Slides, import them into TeacherMate, and then you can create auto grading. And as soon as the student submits the assignment, you get a grade, right? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you what STAR 2.0 items are available on TeacherMate. So I right hear this is what I got from TEA. This is basically the STAR items that are in math. As you can see, all of these equation editor, graphing, inline choice, all those are potential items that can come out on the start test. This box right here is what teacher made has available. So as you can see, if it has a check mark, basically it is available over here. For example, equation editor, it's right here, algebra slash formula. Graphing, well, graphing is right here, and so on and so on. So this is for math. All start types for math are there, and this goes from third grade all the way to uh, algebra, right? And then science, my favorite one, right? You have these items right here, and they're available for, you know, on TeacherMade. And just keep in mind that this can be used also for pre-K, you know, first grade. Every every single assignment that your curriculum writers create on Google Slides or whatever it is, you can import it into TeacherMade and get automated grading. It's not just exclusive to start this, but I like to use it, right? Social studies, you have all item types right here, and then you have the ones that teacher made has available, right? And then RLA, you have every single item right here, and teacher made also has them available, right? So you can also upload passages. You can upload passages into teacher made. And what I really like about this is that teacher made has has a feature that lets you annotate on those passages. A t an, an RLA teacher shared this with, with me, and and she uses Teacher Made for, uh, she uses Teacher Made for for uh, bell ringers, and you can see the student here annotated. I'll give you more information on this, right? So now, because of the time, I had set up a bunch of different, you know, question types that I was going to show you how to make from the beginning, but I'm not going to get through all of them, right? So what I do. I go into, I go into uh, Google Slides, and basically I start off there. I start off there, right? So I create a Google Slides with a bunch of different questions. Now, just keep in mind that right here, I'm going very, very, very basic. I'm just showing you, for example, right here, it's an A, B, C, or D question. Right here is a constructor response. Right here, you have a drag and drop. And basically, I'm gonna show you just a few of the features that you can use because 50 minutes is not enough. I will need at least two hours to show you everything. So I'm just gonna go over a few. So how this works, let's just say that your curriculum writers, they provided an assignment for you on, on the curriculum. You can always file, download as a PDF. So when you download it as a PDF, now you can download a PDF into TeacherMate. So when you're going to TeacherMate, you know, you're gonna see this screen. You can log in with your, with your Google, right? And keep in mind that I've been using this for a long time. So mine has a lot of folders, has a lot of things in it that I have built up over the years, right? But if you log in, yours is going to be blank, right? So you can create folders. Each of these folders has activities. So let me just tell you how organized you can get through here. So uh, my ticks have changed. I haven't updated this, but for example, if I go into category one assignments and, and keep in mind, I created all this. Category one, and then I have all the different ticks here. I have folders for every tick. So for example, the first tick that we would go over uh, in science is 8.5. You can 
click on it, and then you have all these assignments, right? And of course, you can do it however you want. You don't have to specifically follow, you know, the way I'm doing it, but everything works here, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to basically upload the document that I just downloaded. Uh, let me go back. Uh, I'm going to download it, PDF. <clears throat> So now I'm gonna upload this document into here and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to basically create assignments. <clears throat> so I'm gonna create a new activity, upload a file. Now they've done a lot of different updates. Now you can pick straight from the Google Drive, but because I changed computers, I already had everything set up on my other computer. It might take you up, it might take me a little bit longer to show you that. So I'm going to see if it downloaded straight into here. And right here is my file. So when I upload it, it's going to show me this. And don't worry, I'm going to show you an end product at the end. So you can see how well it looks once, once you create it. <clears throat> because it's a lot of pages right here. It's 12 pages. I'm not going to get through all of them, you know, because of the technical issue. But I try to get through most. So now here let's just say that you have 30 pages you know on your pdf you don't have to select all of them you can click one by one if you only want certain ones or you can click all of them i'm gonna click all of them you know just 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 you know just to show you and then here is gonna give you an option if you want us like on the new start is, uh students can click next and it shows the next question this is what this does it's kind of like a google slides this one right here, it's just a big file. And this one right here is highly recommended for RLA because in RLA, you can upload the passages and then you have the questions at the bottom. And I'll show you at the end how well RLA, you know, looks on, on this platform and it mimics the start test almost identical, right? So let's go with slides and then create activity. I always like to have a cover page. Uh, I have the date, you know, I have a, uh, like the ticks that I'm going to be going over. And if you see my screen kind of weird, it's because I'm using a portable monitor. I already had all the settings done for my computer because I'm using a different computer. Uh, it might look out of place, but I'm going to see if I can uh, zoom out to make it smaller. There you go. So now here on title activity, you can just put the name of the assignment. You can put T whatever it is or what passage here i'm just going to put sample you know worksheet sample worksheet right so you save so now here this is where the magic happens remember i showed you this right here a b c or d obviously you cannot click here because it's a pdf how can you make this multiple choice well remember that blue box i showed you with the item types this is right here insert so, so these are all the different types of items that you can put now, for your specific subject, obviously, you're not going to use all of them, right? Like, for example, out of these, all of these, I only use like six of them for my subject. But if you're teaching other subjects, you're going to be using some of them. Maybe you're not going to use all of them. It just really depends, right? So because this is a multiple choice, I'm going to put a multiple choice, right? So where do I want that multiple choice? If you can see my mouse, you're going to click here, and then you're going to drag, and you can see the bubbles for me right? Notice, notice that there's nothing in them. So I have to create an answer key. So this is a question that came out on the start test. Uh, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago. So I'm going to create the key, which you just click on it. And there you go. Now you have the option to leave the bubbles blank, or you can select here, A, B, C, or D, whatever you want. Now, how is the student going to see this? Well, you can create, you can click here, preview, and it's gonna and, and the student is gonna have access to all this. So you make it smaller, and then look at this. It looks like a start this question. So you can click A, you can click B, you can click C, you can do all of that. That is how you create multiple choice question. And then you can click, and if it's green, the student got it right. If you click the wrong answer, it's gonna be red, right? And you can see this. You can see this as a teacher. The student, it depends on the options that you put at the end. Right. So now this one right here is is from social studies. This is a short constructor response question. Right now, so uh, constructor response questions. You know, our students struggle with those. So in my classroom, I try to put at least three every week. You know, one for every tick. Right. I, I sometimes I just get it straight from from previous release start test, or I just make it up. 
And this is very, very easy. The only thing about this is just like those of you that have a start. Uh, okay, there you go. So here, I'm going to create the space where I want my constructor response. Now, you can do this two ways. I'm sorry I, I didn't mention that. You can click Insert. You can you can uh, select if you want students to get zero points if they don't answer anything, if they can highlight, underline, all of that. This right here is starter options. This is what the student will see before they before they they type an answer. So uh, make sure you use complete, you know, like like whatever you want, right? So then you save it. So how is the student gonna see this? You click preview. And then right here is where you're going to see this. So notice here you can have started text, right? So the student reads, clicks, and then the student will start typing. And you can ask the students, you know, like uh, put italic, bold this word, you know, underline, like whatever it is, right? But like I said, you have to grade this individually. But in the near future, they're going to add AI grading. You just tell the AI what what the what the answer is, and and it'll grade it for you, right? So then <clears throat> we go to the next one. This right here is one of my favorite ones. This right here is going to be drag and drop. You know, drag and drop uh, is, is, an, is a new item on the start test that comes out quite a bit, right? So this is where it can get a little bit tricky, you know, but I don't want you to feel intimidated. Us teachers, we can adapt. Trust me, the amount of time this is going to save you, it's, it's insane. Me, that I've been using this for a few years, it only takes me like 10 minutes to upload a document, put the answers, and then and then assign to Google Classroom. So all of these right here are going to be draggable objects, and this is going to be where you're going to drop them. So you have to use two different features here. This right here, the legislator brand, is where I want students to drop answers. So you're going to click and drag because you want this space to be the drop zone. So you're going to put drop zone, right? Now, over here at the top, you need to click allow multiple items so it can allow more than one drop. Now notice that there's two more. You can do it one by one like we did like this because you're going to have to put answers there, uh, drop zone, or if you're good with keyboard shortcuts, control copy, control V, and then you paste it like that, right? So we're not done yet. We still need these draggable objects. Please don't feel intimidated. It's, it's not that hard once you get used to it, and it's going to save you a lot of money. I'm sorry, a lot of time. So we want to make this object draggable, right? So you have to click on this scissors right here, and then create a draggable image. You click on it. Then you just uh, square this area right here, and now this is a draggable item. Right now, you can you can do it from the beginning. You press the scissors; it's already clicked, and now you have declare wars. You have to do this to all of them. But like I said, if you're good with keyboard shortcuts, this one you can press space, and it it's, it already does it for you. Now, all these keyboard uh, shortcuts are available on the on the website. Uh, they have uh, frequently asked questions, and and they have all those things. They have them there. A lot of the stuff that I didn't get to go over, it, it's it's gonna be on there. Right. So now, now I need to uh, uh, tell the system what the answers are. So if you're looking at these branches of the government and then you have like their purpose, interpret laws, it's going to be the judicial branch. So the student is going to have to drag this one into here. You have to link the drop zone with the draggable object. How are you going to do that? Well, you have to click on the draggable object. 
and then you have to press shift on your keyboard and then click where you want the answer. You're gonna get this box and then you click here, link, drag and drop, and it's already linked, right? So declares wars. We know that that's the legislative uh, branch. So then you shift, click, and then right here, link it, and it is linked. And then command air forces, uh, armed forces, I'm sorry, that's gonna be the executive branch. So again, click, shift, and then click, and then link it and there you go now i'm not going to do all of them to save on time and this is what the student would see right so you have this is what the student is going to see on, on their assignment and basically interpret laws you can you can do all this i mean obviously the answers are are wrong but this, this is basically what the students can do you know they, they can they can drag and drop and then when you get your score it'll tell you which ones are wrong right now <clears throat> this one right here uh this 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 next one it is very good uh even though th this th this i got it from the start test it says to move the correct answer right so obviously that's a drag and drop right you don't have to stick with the item types of the start test for whatever questions you want to use or your assignments i'm gonna make this into a drop down menu right even though it says move the correct answer i can edit that so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna click insert and I'm gonna click on teacher text, and this is what the students are gonna see. So anytime you have something there that you wanna correct, you can just put the box here, and I'm gonna put something like uh, select the answer from the drop down menu, you know, and, and then it covers that, right? And you can change the font, you can do all that, right? But this is where we're gonna add the drop down menu. So again, we can click insert or we can just click and drag and then we're gonna go into drop down, right? So the answer choices here was zero plus one, negative one. So we have zero and then we have plus one and then we have negative one, right? So obviously the first, uh, the first option was a proton. So I'm gonna select the answer and then here is what the what, where, where it goes right and of course you can change the, the size of the font you know depending on, on, on your settings you can change it and then the location is asking for nucleus or energy level so i'm going to create another drop down menu and i'm going to have energy levels <clears throat> and then the other possible answer is the nucleus <clears throat> the nucleus Ah, oh, okay, anyways, so then this is the nucleus, right? So then you have to do the same thing to these other answers, but remember, copy and paste. So you can control C, control V, control C, control V, and the only thing when you do this, you have to be able to change the answer. So a neutron is zero, an electron is negative one, right? And then for this answer, same thing, you're gonna drag and drop, I'm sorry, uh, copy and paste, and then you change the answer. So the neutron belongs in the nucleus, the electron belongs in the energy levels, and then you save the changes. Now, how is the student gonna see this? Well, you can always go to preview, and this is what the student is gonna see. You know, and of course, you can fix the boxes to be more aligned, but I'm going kind of fast uh, because of the issue. But this is what the student is gonna see. You have your, your different answers right here, you have you can select and then basically when the student submits they can see their answers All right so then i'm gonna go to now i'm gonna have to skip this one this is straight from my curriculum this was it's gonna take me a little while but this is basically just match you're gonna match this to this there's no start uh, start this item where you have to match at least not to my knowledge so i'm gonna skip that one for now Okay, but you can do match, especially for, for the lower grade levels in elementary where they have to match, you know, like an apple to the actual picture. That is really, really good. Uh, but I, I, if you teach the lower levels and you want to learn more about this, I can set a, a, a Teams meeting, you know, sometime in the future where I can show you how to do this. Right now, <clears throat> multi-select, it's another one that you can put on here. And the same thing, we're going to drag, we're going to click and drag, and then you're going to select checkbox slash multi-select. Now here, it only gives me four options, but there's five. So you can click here into five, and then you can just align it to where it's straight, and then you can set up your answers. Uh, you can just set this as the answer, and that as the answer. So when the student 
uh, gets this image, this is what the student is going to see, right? And you can have an option to where either if you if you get one right, you get partial credit, or if you only get one right, you don't get any credit. You you can change those settings. Uh, I use this a lot in in my in my classroom. Now, <clears throat> math. You know, if you teach math, forgive me, I'm not really good at math, uh, but I know I just went into uh, TEA and I just got a graphing question. For graphs, you can do this two ways. You can paste an image and then you have that equation where you have to graph it. There's two ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you the very, very easy way. And then I'm gonna show you a slightly more complicated way. But once you do it once, you, you'll learn it. So you're gonna click on preview, right? And this is what the student is gonna see. Right now, you can ask the students. Well, you know what? Go ahead and use these items over here to mark the answer, where the line intercepts. Right? So the student will click here, and basically you do this right here. That's the answer that I got from the answer key, and then you can just draw a line like that, and there you go. But this one, you're gonna have to check on your own because you haven't set up a grading system for this. You know, can you set up a grading system like this? Of course you can. Right, so that's what we're gonna go into with this one right here. It's the same question, but now I'm gonna add a graph, right? So insert graphing. So then you're going to click and drag where you want your uh, graph to be. Now, when I was setting up this this particular uh, item type, I was having issues. It was glitching. It was glitching. So I'm hoping that it doesn't glitch right now. So you have the option of of choosing. For example, like this type of graph right here, I use this a lot in, in my science classroom for speed and distance and all that good stuff. Uh, but for, for algebra or eighth grade math or, or whatever math, you know, you, you teach graphs, you can go with plotting points and this is what you're going to see. You can put labels on your axis. So for this one, I'm just going to put X axis and on this one, I'm going to put Y axis. You can, you can change the number here to, to, to like to, to uh, tell it like, if you want to make it larger or not, but I'm going to make it just very simple. I'm going to change it to five. And then over here, I'm going to change it just, just so that way, you know, we make it simple. But once you understand this, you, you can do it however you want, right? So then here, I need to set up the correct answer. So on the Y, it's going to be a two. And on the X, it's going to be a three. So then you save, right? So you see, it's glitching. You know, this, 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 this is what I was talking about. It doesn't show the full, but usually it fixes itself, right? Um, then you click preview. Okay, so it's showing the whole graph, right? So then here, the student can just click where they think the answer is. So because there's only two plotting points, the student can only put two. But let's just say that the student makes a mistake, they can always click on it to erase it. And as you can see, it's glitching. It's glitching here. But for a graph, uh, uh, hopefully this doesn't happen to the student. I never use this. I, I barely started using it when I was setting up my presentation. But this will be the answer right here. And, and, and for some reason, you know, it doesn't let me click on it, get my score. But because I put it on the right one, it's correct. Let's just say that the student puts negative three, it would mark it wrong. Let me see if I can, if I can do it here. And get my score and it's red. The student got it wrong, okay? So now, I think for now, I'm gonna skip the rest of them, just so I can show you how to finish off this assignment. I still had a lot more to show you. Like for example, you know, the equation, students can type equations with exponents. You can do fractions uh, right here. You can do type in the number. You can do uh, uh, the, the hotspot, inline choice. I mean, you, you can do pretty much everything, but because of our technical issue, I'm not gonna be able to like, like show you everything. But let's just say that you did all your items. We have to finish this assignment and assign it to Google Classroom. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna assign this assignment to Google Classroom. So once you close it, you go to, to your where your folder is, and then you look for that specific assignment, right? Which is this one. So then you click here, assign activity, and then this is where you can change the name if you want, right? You can you can use Canvas Schoology, but you know I don't use any of those. So Google Classroom and if you use the paid version, you can have access to all this. If you get the free version, you only have access to TeacherMate, and basically you would have to give the link to the student. And it's it's just very limited. It's just very limited. It's not worth it. I, I think eighty dollars is it's 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 a good price for what you get, right? Now, if you're planning 
and using this, when you sign up with your Google account, automatically it's going to sync all your Google Classrooms. Here, because I archived all my Google Classrooms from last year, I created one for, for, for this specific you know, session, and it's this one right here. Right. If you have six Google Classroom, seven Google Classroom, they're, they're all going to appear here. They are going to show up here. And then let's just say that you only want to give a specific assignments to your college prep classes. Then you select only the college prep for your SPED class, for your EB class, for your small, like wh whatever, whatever it is. Right. Now, let's just say that you have multiple populations in one class. You have SPEDs, you have EBs, you have, you know, GT, where you can select which students you want. So a lot of you already signed up. You know, so you can select all or you can only select the type of students that you want this assignment. And when you assign it, the other students won't see it, only the ones that you selected. But in this case, we're going to put all students. Now, if you're planning on using, you know, teacher made in the future, I highly encourage you to take a picture of the settings that I'm going to show you because I found that these settings work best, you know, for me. And, and the other teachers that use it in my campus, they, they agree with me. Now, you have the option to assign the assignment immediately to all your classrooms, uh, or you can schedule it. I don't use these two. I save as draft. And as the new period comes in, I just assign. I go to the Google Classroom and then assign because uh, it, it, when I first started using this, by the time I would get to seventh period, everybody had finished the assignment and I had even I haven't even like taught the lesson for that class, right? So save as draft and I'll show you how that works. Auto sync scores, this doesn't really matter, you know, because I don't get the grades from Google Classroom. I get them from here. Uh, so you can skip this. Now, disable submit button, you can click no. Now, students can check answers. This is very important because students, you know, they'll try whatever they can to do the less amount of work. If you put that students can check their answers, they're going to check their answers. It'll tell the student how many questions they got right, how many questions they got wrong before they submit it. But guess what their friends are going to do? They're going to copy, right? So me, I leave this at zero. It's up to you. They can check the answers one. They can check the answers three times. You know, the only time when, when I allow this is basically when we're doing tutoring, you know, where students can check their answers. Now, minimum score to submit. This is where none, or if you want the student to get at least a 50, to get an 80, let's just say that the, to put the setting at 80, the student has a 50, it won't let them submit. You know, you can even put 100, you know, if you want to check, you know, the SGMs, you know, but me, usually I leave it at 70, right? Now, when the student submits, you know, the students can see all the answers they got right or wrong, or they can only see their score. I put their score only because if a student in the morning gets 100, by the time after lunch, everybody has 100 because the student takes pictures of the answers. I've gone through all of this. So this is trial and error that I've done. This is what worked. And, and this is not going to stop the students from cheating. They'll find a way. Now, display score as percent, that's fine. When the student submits, you can change here to where they can see all the correct answers or show score only. I just have score only. Once I have the grade on TAC, then I return the, op the, the assignment so that way the student can open it and see what they got right or wrong. And basically when the work is returned, show correct answers and that's what, they, what they're going to see that. But once they submit, they won't be able to see the answers and, and I'll show you right now. Uh, copy and paste, prevent. Prevent copy and paste because, you know, if you have a constructive response, you know, they'll share their answers. Now here, these are things that students can can use in their assignment. You can allow them to post links, you know, to have a calculator. You know, they can upload images to the assignment, uh, especially for, for those EB students. You have speech to text. Basically, you just highlight a, the student can highlight an area and it will read it for them. You know, it will read it for them, read aloud. Uh, so it's very good, especially when you have those students training for help us. This is actually a very good feature. It's not 100%. But I, for me, it works. You know, I know for our late teachers might be a little bit different, but for me, it works. So then you click save, and then the assignment is gonna go into the Google Classroom. Now, uh, it, it depending on the amount of classes, sometimes it takes a little while, sometimes it goes right in. But if you go to the Google Classroom, <clears throat> you can see these assignments that I have posted, but you can't see them yet because this is what I was talking about. As a student walks in, 
you know, as the student walking in the period, I go in here and then edit and then assign, and then the students can start working on the assignment. So, so basically when you click on this, you're gonna see this, uh, this right here, you click on it and you're gonna begin with Google, you know, um, you see my wife's computer. So you, the student would select the Google address in which they signed into the computer and then yes to the permissions. And then there you go. We have the assignment that we worked on, right? So then this is what the student is going to see, right? And then you can just, you know, a typical student answer, IDK, right? We can put it there. Uh, then the drag and drop, the drag and drop, and then basically everything that we did. Now I'm going to click submit. Oh, I need a 70. Let me see. Uh, so I can show you then the nucleus, the neutron is zero nucleus and then electron is negative one energy levels this one we didn't do it here this answers that i put on here uh this one there's no answer this is what we clicked in here uh now for you algebra teachers i know that in some questions they have to shade a certain part of this you know you can always tell the students to just use the pencil to shade that part you know uh this won't pick it up as a grade but this is what it's going to pick up as a grade and then I believe I didn't do any of those. And then let me see if it lets me submit. So you see how I got a 91. This is what the student will see. Now, you as a teacher, how can this help you? Well, I'm going to go back to the Google Slides and show you how you can basically use this to check all your students' grades. All right. So, for example, when you click on an assignment that you submitted, notice here how I have day six assignment this is an assignment that i created and i assigned this to all my classes and you can see this by classroom so you can see nine students opened this assignment uh eight submitted the assignment 16 students opened the assignment 16 submitted the assignment and you can lock and close the assignment so that way students are not submitting the assignment like like super super late right so let's just say that you want to click on us on the period you click on the period and then you're going to see all the names of the students here and you're going to see their grade and when they finish. So if you're on TAC, you can just go to first period. You can uh, make your assignment and just copy the grades from here, which is very, very, very good. Now, here I cannot show you the names of the students, but this is where the names of the students would appear. Right now, what if you want to check what students have submitted an assignment. Do you have to go period by period? How would you do that? Well, teacher may, makes it very, very simple because you would click here on notifications and it'll tell you which students have submitted which assignments. As you can see, I just submitted one assignment a minute ago, but this is where you would see all the assignments that have been submitted by, by the student. But sir, I submitted the assignment. No, you didn't because your name is not here. So what would you see as a teacher? When you click on the assignment, you can see what the student answered. You can see how long the student finished the, the assignment. You can see how long each student took on each question. And this is a very good tool to catch cheaters. They just say that you have an assignment that takes 10 minutes, but the student finished it in two minutes. Obviously, they were cheating, right? So me, I'm a hawk when it comes to that. And the students have no words because I catch them, right? So you can see what the students did. This is a constructive response. So you see there what the student you know, uh, typed and you can see what they got wrong, all that good stuff. Now, <clears throat> another thing that I like about this is that you can click on a specific student. Let's just say that you have a, 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 a meeting with the parent and, and the student is failing. You've been failing the student because the student is not doing work. Well, here you can click on a specific student and it's gonna give you all the assignments that the student has submitted. So for example, right here, the name of the student would come up and then you can see all the, the, the assignments that the student has worked on. If the student have not submitted the assignment, it would appear like this in progress. You know, and then you can click on it and you can see what the student did or what the student hasn't done. Right. And then this is very good for me because when I'm having parent meetings, you know, with the parents and the students, I show the parents this and the student just all of a sudden stops talking because we i i got the student they, i i got them you know there, there's no way they can lie about it right so i i i like this specific uh you know platform now i had to skip a lot of stuff but let me just show you some of the assignments that i have done you know to show you this one right here is an assignment that i created from scratch 
you know, I'm going to open it so you guys can see it later on, but I'm going to show it to you here. <clears throat> right. Uh, this is what this, and like I said, this is what I created from scratch, right? This is something that, that I gave my students, you know, prior to, to the start this, right? So <clears throat> right here, I always like to have a cover page. You don't have to, but I, I like, and, and I like it day one, the tips. And then we start off with this. All of this, I just copy and paste it into Google Slides, and I created all this information. So it's eight slides, but there's a lot of information, right? So then right here, you have more atoms. Here you have, you know, type in the number. Uh, here, type in the number. Uh, right here, you have, you know, multi-select. Here, you type in the number. Uh, so like here, you have dra drag and drop. Right here, you have, you know, hotspot. Uh, right here you have, and, and like the possibilities are endless. You have, uh, I have a table here that I created, and then basically this is, these are the non-metals, metals, and metalloids, and the students would actually, you know, uh, drag and drop into that area. Again, hotspot, and basically the student submits, and I got a three because I, I didn't try to do it, right? Now, let me show you an RLA assignment, how that would look like. Uh, this is math, uh, let's see, this one right here. I'm going to open all assignments so that way you can see what you can do. This is an RLA. This is this is from the start test uh, from two years ago, right? And you can upload an entire passage like we have right here. And I got this from TEA, right? Uh, you upload the passage. You scroll down. You scroll down the, and the student can annotate. You can highlight. Uh, you can circle. Now, just keep in mind, you will not get a grade for this automatically. You would go and give an extra grade, you know, and then you scroll down and we have the first answer. So then uh, you click, find the right answer. Right here, you have A, B, C, or D. Here you have multi-select, uh, A, B, C, or D, A, B, C, or D, A, B, C, or D. So basically, it looks very similar to the start test. This is why I love this product. Now, let me see something for the lower grade levels. Uh, I have, uh, I think it's third, this is third grade. I'm going to assign it. Uh, and, and this is very, very nice because it's not just limited to the tested subjects. You know, you can use it for even for pre-K. Uh, so right here you have, you yeah, know, drop down with the answers. Uh, then A, B, C, or D, A, B, C, or D. You have all this stuff. Let me see if I can find the one. It's because I have all these assignments that I posted. I wanted to show you one for the lower, lower grade levels. This is English 2 right here, Kinder. So you, uh, the curriculum writers, they work very hard to make very, very, very good assignments on Google Slides. But the thing is that it takes a very, very long time to grade all these assignments. It would only take you about 15 minutes to create an answer sheet, and it saves all that grading time. Right, so this is something very simple. As you can see, this is just something that I that I that I got from from uh, from from Google. And basically, you count the balls. You know, you can put the number here, you can put the number there. You know, four, uh, two. Let me see. It's almost time. And then they can submit. Now, can you share your assignments? Yes, you can. You can share all the assignments that you create. You can share with your, you know, with your grade level, you know, with other teachers in other campuses. And how you would do that, you basically click on the on the assignment, and and then you click share, you know, sharing, and then you just copy and paste and give it to the teacher. Uh, let me look at the questions. Uh, yes, you can. You can choose to add four points, five points, six points, you can type in a rubric. And let's just say that the student only got like half of the points, you can give them partial credit. Uh, let me see if I can go in there uh, so I can show you before we finish how we can do that. Uh, yes, you can. You can You can set the amount of points for each question however you want. You can put 10 points, you can put five points, you can give partial credit, you can do all that stuff. So when you go to the short constructor response and, and you click on it, uh no i have to go in let me see real, real quickly i know that you guys have to go but let me just show you real quickly uh, let me see so short constructor response so right here so right here this is where you choose how many points you want to give the, the the teacher so for example right here the, the student i'm sorry if you want to give them you know like let's just say two points 
you would put it here. If you want to give them five points, you would put it there. So yes, you can. Uh, and and I, again, guys, I'm so sorry about our technical issue. Uh, I wish, you know, because there was a lot of stuff that I missed. But before you leave, if you need to meet with me, you know, at a different date after school, uh, just send me an email. Uh, you can ask me questions in the Google Classroom and we can set up a, a meeting after school uh, uh, on Teams so I can show you how to navigate it. I only cover maybe like 60% of everything that is available. Uh, you know, as it is, it's a lot of information, but $80 for the amount of time that is going to save you. I, I think that's a really, it's, it's totally worth it. It went up my first year that I used it. It was only $30. It went up to 60. Now it's up to 80. So because they're adding more features, they're adding more item types, they're adding AI. I wouldn't doubt it if they increase their price by the time the year ends, you know, but I would totally jump on it. You can get the 30 day free trial. You can see how it works. Uh, what I like about it is that I can go to each student individually and check their answers, check how long they took. It is, it is a time saver, you know, and again, uh, it's time. Thank you so much for joining again. I apologize for the technical issue. We lost 15 minutes of a lot of valuable information. But like I said, uh, please make sure that if you want to learn more about this, you send me a message, uh, uh, an email, salome.benitez, or on Google Classroom, you can send me a message and we can set up an appointment, you know, to, to help you out after school. You know, thank you so much, everybody. I uh, hope you found this session uh, very informational. Again, my name is Mr. Salome Benitez from Jaime Escalante, and I hope you have an amazing 2024-25 school year. Bye.